From the elephant bird to the woolly mammoth, there are so many extinct species that scientists would love to bring back to life. I'm Melissa Malati, your host, and here are your top 10 extinct species scientists are trying to bring back to life. In our number 10 spot, we have the elephant bird. The elephant bird became extinct approximately 1000 to 1200 CE, and it is most likely due to human activity due to hunting, climate, and vegetation change and habitat loss due to deforestation. These birds are from the ratite family, Epornethidae, and they were enormous flightless birds. They used to live in Madagascar. They stood about 9.8 feet tall and weighed approximately 1,600 pounds. Their closest living relative is the kiwi bird. It is said that they most likely ate low hanging fruit, even though they look like they could gobble you up in one go. I would have personally thought them to be carnivores, but thankfully not. I would be fine if scientists brought them back. Any herbivore, you know, is fine. But if they pulled a Jurassic Park on us and brought back the carnivores, then I would not be okay. In our number nine spot, we have the Pyrenean Ibex. The Pyrenean Ibex was basically a wild goat. When people say that they love goats, I'm always a little perplexed. Why? Just why? <laughs> Watch, watch my dad will for sure watch this episode and will say something like, hey, I love goats, and yes, he does indeed. I don't know why. He's always sending me goat videos when he goes to his friend's farm. I shall never understand. Anyways, this wild goat was five feet long and apparently 30 inches tall. It was found in southwestern Europe and the species died out in 2003, which is really not that long ago. I was 13. Shoot, I need to stop giving away my age. I mean, I was just born. <laughs> Anyways, the last goat was born and died seven minutes after its birth due to a lung defect. Hunting, inbreeding, and other factors basically caused this goat's extinction over time. Honestly, it's a bit of a shame that this goat no longer exists because it looks rather majestic, much more classier than regular goats. In our number eight spot, we have the Chinese river dolphin. It breaks my heart to think that a species of the dolphin might be extinct, but sadly it is. The Chinese river dolphin, known as the Baji, sadly went extinct in 2002. It primarily lived in freshwater rivers, primarily in the Yangtze River. The main reason for its extinction is due to the impact of humans. It was directly targeted by meat lovers, but also due to an increasing amount of construction projects on the river, the dolphin who relies primarily on its sonar capabilities found it hard to navigate for food because of the construction noise. Pollution in the waters also didn't help either, as well as overfishing. The males were about 7.5 feet long, while the females could be about 8.2 feet. I have a soft spot for dolphins, so honestly, I really hope science are able to bring this one back. In our number seven spot, we have the dodo bird. The dodo bird is a bird that I would probably be terrified of if I was in a room alone with it, as it's just kind of scary looking. I don't know. I'm not a massive fan of birds in general, so maybe my biases. The dodo bird lived on the island of Mauritius. The bird was about 3.3 feet tall when alive. They went extinct in the 17th century, so quite a long time ago now. What did they eat? Well, their diet primarily consisted of eating from a specific tree that was, you know, called the dodo tree, but the scientific name for the tree is called Tambalacoke tree. They also ate nuts, fruits, roots, and small insects. So really, I would have nothing to be afraid of. I bet it would totally mess me up though, cause they were, you know, big birds. My scrawny self would just... Hide. In our number six spot, we have the Tasmanian tiger. The Tasmanian tiger, despite its name, isn't actually a tiger, but was named this due to its tiger-like characteristics. The tiger only recently went extinct in the 20th century in 1936. The species slowly began to decrease about 2,000 years ago due to pressure from indigenous human settlers. They lived primarily in Australia and New Guinea. They lived primarily in Australia and New Guinea. They were typically 39 inches to 51 inches long and 24 inches high. They have 
a close living relative and that's the Tasmanian Devil and the Numbat. Not gonna lie, I had no idea the Tasmanian Devil was a real animal. <laughs> I totally thought it was just a lovable cartoon character, so I'm shook. Anyone else? Apparently there is hope for the Tasmanian Tiger as with recovering a little DNA, it may be possible to de-extinct the species. I hope scientists are able to. In our number 5 spot we have the Woolly Mammoth. If the Woolly Mammoth was brought back to life and found just wandering around the world, I don't know how I would feel. <laughs> Not gonna lie. I mean, first thought is to be terrified, but maybe that's dramatic because it's not like it would try to eat me because they are herbivores. Hashtag drama queen. <laughs> Apparently, the woolly mammoth would be about 10 feet to 12 feet high with a weight of up to six tons. They are the relative of African elephants and they went extinct about 4,000 years ago in East Asia. Fun fact about the woolly mammoth the rings on the tusk tells you how how old it is, just like the rings on a tree do. Apparently there is a line for every year. In our number 4 spot we have the saber toothed tiger. Ok, if scientists brought back this species, this would be insane. But do we really need another predatory species that want humans to die? We already have to deal with, you know, lions, tigers and the reptiles in our government. So I think I speak for all of us when I say this isn't necessary. But would be cool to witness. <laughs> the saber toothed tiger has been a wonder to many for so so long. They are famously known for their long curved canine teeth. It can weigh anywhere between 485 pounds to 961 pounds. It was approximately 39 inches tall. Its closest relative is the tiger, of course. They originated in North and South America about 10,000 years ago, so it would be extraordinary if scientists found a way to bring them out of extinction. In our number 3 spot we have the Glyptodont. The Glyptodont is a larger subfamily of the armadillo. They were around from approximately 34 million years ago in South America and when the continents became connected, they spread to North America. They were about 12 feet long and 1.5 feet high. They had fluted teeth and they were covered in a thick bony carapace. They went extinct approximately 7,000 to 8,000 years ago. It's so interesting how much bigger animals were thousands of years ago and now all of these big animals have much smaller subfamilies that are alive today. I mean obviously that's better for us humans as the less threats we have physically, you know, the better but still interesting to note. In our number 2 spot we have the quagga. Ok, so you're probably thinking, Melissa is this not just a zebra? Yeah, it is a species of zebra but it's still different and it's extinct and scientists are thinking of bringing it back. The quagga went extinct in the 19th century and one of the last pictures that we have of the quagga alive is from 1870 in a London zoo. It's a subspecies of zebra from South Africa. It's about 8 feet 5 inches long and 4 feet 5 inches tall. It has a sandy brown coat with a white tail and stripes from the top to the middle part of its body. They were herbivores and would typically live 20 to 40 years. They look, you know, pretty majestic to me. I hope this is a species that scientists are able to bring back. In our number one spot, we have the ground sloth. The ground sloth is from South Africa and went extinct approximately 11,000 years ago and some of the species of ground sloths have been extinct longer. The megatherium for example has been extinct for 12,000 years and this one in particular looks more like a bear than a sloth. It was massive and could be up to 20 feet tall weighing about 6,600 pounds. Imagine these sloths were just roaming the world today. There are already enough scary bears in the world. I feel like, you know, we're good without this one. But still, this would be an unbelievable breakthrough if we could bring back these creatures. Although I am sure that they wouldn't be as friendly as Sid from Ice Age. That short cute little guy wouldn't hurt a fly. His lisp is literally the cutest thing in the world. But anyways, would be cool if they came back. Thanks so much for watching everyone. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for good vibes and more content like this. I'm Melissa Milotti, your host. Follow me on Insta or YouTube at Melissa Milotti and I will see you next time. In the meantime, have a good day, sir.